What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. Today I wanted to do a video on Mauricio Pochettino and the reason why is because two weeks ago I made a video saying Arsenal 5-0 Chelsea I'm done and that was one of the worst results that I've ever seen in my years in my tenure as a Chelsea fan. A forever tenure of course go through the good times go through the bad times but damn that was terrible and I was done with Mauricio Pochettino as was about 80% of the Chelsea fan base. But it's fair to say that since then a lot has changed. We've gone on a good, a decent run of form, especially comparatively to the rest of our season. Two wins out of our last three games. The draw against Aston Villa being the, the one that wasn't a win, but if it wasn't for VAR, we would have won that game 3-2. And within that game, at halftime, there was a tactical switch that's going to be a big, big part of this video and my opinions on Pochettino. But apart from that, two wins, 7-0 if you combine them, 2-0 against Tottenham, 5-0 against West Ham, two clean sheets, two massive wins in London Derby back to back. As well as that, we've climbed up the table. We are now in seventh place. We've finally escaped 12th place, bottom half of the Premier League table. We are in the European spots. We will be in Conference League if Manchester City win the FA Cup. And we're level with Manchester United, who are below us, but have a plus 14 better goal difference. But we're only two points off Newcastle in sixth place with three games to go. That will be a big, big race. And sixth place will be Europa League spot as long as Manchester City win the FA Cup. And surely we can trust them to do the job over United because they are absolutely floundering at the end of this season. They are all, all over the place. So we've actually climbed up the table. We're in European spots and there's some fuel to the fire because of a report from David Ornstein who ruled out a load of managers from potentially being the next Chelsea manager if Pochettino's job becomes vacant. Most notably probably is Ruben Amrim, also Jose Mourinho and some other names. So a lot of the names that people are clamoring for uh, saying Pochettino should go and replace them with this name they've actually been taken out of contention so that will change opinions on whether Pochettino has to go yes we judge him on what he's done at Chelsea and we're going to talk about that in this video but also the people that are going to replace him if there's no one out there to replace him and do a better job there's probably not much point in replacing him either and one more thing that David Ornstein said that is very very interesting and important and he was very clear about this is Chelsea are demanding that Pochettino and Chelsea finish in a Europa League spot this season which would be sixth place so there's a lot to talk about in this video I want to judge Pochettino with three games left to go in this season so that we're not clouded by any achievements that happens by the end what has he done so far and what are my opinions before we get into it please make sure to like the video it takes you one second and helps me out so so much and subscribe to get us closer to 10 thousand subscribers. So firstly, let's talk about what has changed and why there's suddenly an air of positivity around Mauricio Pochettino. Well, firstly, what we already talked about is the results. Obviously, our last two games, 7-0 on aggregate. But it's not just that. I actually want to go to the game before, which is where something huge changed, which was Aston Villa, who we were 2-0 down at half time, And then we heard after the game that Pochettino and also Thiago Silva, so maybe Pochettino shouldn't take credit for this. And maybe we'll see Thiago Silva back as a, a coach at Chelsea at some point. I'd absolutely love that. He said he will be back. But anyway, that's not what this video is about. At half time, we saw finally Finally, Pochettino did a tactical switch. He showed he had a tactical brain going on there and he inverted Mark Cucurella into midfield. Now, I just want to point out that I'm not part of the t Twitter tactical trend of you must invert a fullback to win a game of football. Absolutely not. But when you have a player like Mark Cucurella at left back, who is not someone who's going to bomb up the touchline, he's not someone who likes to attack. His profile doesn't fit that at all. And inverting into midfield fits his qualities so much better. Not only that, but it helps out Moises Caicedo because he now has a partner next to him all the time. So the opposition aren't always pressing him with only one man in that lone DM. It's very hard to progress the ball that way. Not only that, it meant Mudrik would hug the touchline, which is much better for his game than being a bit all over the place. It gives us width. It gives us so much more structure. It fits our center backs to be in a back three. It helps our counter pressing. It helps Conor Gallagher be able to go more forwards, but it also allows him to drop into kind of the left back position to pick up the ball. You can imagine Enzo maybe filling that position. It just made so much sense. It fit the players in the team. It fit Cucurella specifically, stopped him bombing up and down the field and put him in a position where we could see his 
passing come into fray because he's a very good incisive passer he can direct passes really well and he's also an excellent counter presser in that middle his aggression is a bit more understandable do i think that it suits him perfectly no i think we can get someone better in the summer who'll fit that role better however equally i have to give credit to cucurella who did really well but anyway this video is about pochettino and he made that tactical switch against aston villa and then against tottenham and west ham we've seen it in both games and it has worked absolute wonders for the exact reasons i just said and pochettino deserves credit for that there's there is also the flip side of that which is why pochettino didn't realize that sooner he really should have most fans who watch football and know what they're talking about yes we're not gonna act like we know better than poch poch clearly knows better than all of us fans when it comes to football however this was something that a lot of us were clamoring for because it made so much sense as i already said first for cucurella second for the team third for structure it made sense in every sense i didn't even mention this earlier but madweke hugs the touchline so much better for him palmer gets that space in the middle operates in the right half space it brings jackson into play it literally fits everyone our, everyone in our team so much better and as much as it's a positive there have to be questions about why it wasn't implemented sooner and we're going to talk about that more later when we go into the more negative sides of Pochettino and why people want him gone now aside from that one thing you also have to give Pochettino credit for which is something we couldn't say towards the end of Graham Potter's tenure and under so many managers in the past at Chelsea everyone talks about the player power at Chelsea getting rid of managers well the players have not once turned on Pochettino that has to be said they've always fought for him they've always fought for the badge he has the the players on his side and also I don't think he's improved too many players but especially recently we've seen Noni Madweke take a lot of strides in his game yes Pochettino talks about running way too much but one thing that Madweke really needed to improve on was his off the ball but also getting in those goal scoring positions and we've seen that come into play so much and not just that but his maturity he played that pass to Jackson against West Ham to give him his first goal instead of maybe taking it on himself we saw the penalty incident a couple weeks ago it seems like he's matured in that aspect Conor Gallagher another player that clearly has improved under Pochettino however equally I'm not sure there's many players past that yes you can talk about Nicholas Jackson Malo Gusto Cole Palmer but Cole Palmer was just given the stage to show his talent and Malo Gusto and Nicholas Jackson all showed what they're capable of during preseason without much implementation from Pochettino. I give him credit for giving the players freedom to express themselves. I do think that's really important as a manager. And even within this new system that they're doing, inverting the fullback, creating a 3-2 build-up, getting the wingers wide, getting people in the half spaces, getting Jackson involved, I still think he's giving the players freedom within it. They're not chess pieces that are forced to move. You can see Mudrick still comes inside quite a lot. Palmer will just drift over to the left-hand side wherever you see space. Gallagher will come towards left back to pick up the ball. The players still have freedom and I think Pochettino has done that really well. And the last thing I want to give him credit for is our attack. I think he's really, really improved our attack. Attack under Graham Potter was all the talk of the town. We were so, so bad. Scoring a goal was such a rarity. We were celebrating goals whether they won us or lost us the game like they were the best thing in the world. They never came. And under Pochettino, he's really opened up the attack. We've had literally recently we've had the 5-0 win against West Ham with the 6-0 win against Everton and the 4-3 win versus United that's all within the last month so Pochettino definitely deserves credit for our attack however it's obviously not all positive for Pochettino we can't just get fooled by the last two games where things have gone our way there's a lot of stuff that Pochettino hasn't gone right and has got people rightfully calling for his head and for him to lose his job firstly the positive about tactics I've already spoken about it already but those tactics really should have been implemented early and I'm not just talking about inverting the fullback as I said any form of tactical implementation almost every game this season has felt like Pochettino had just thrown 11 players on the pitch told them to play in a 4-2-3-1 and just told them to go crazy Enzo spent half the season playing as center forward Levi Cole played half the season as a left back and he wasn't even inverting from left back into center back and then releasing Gusto or Reece Jones and he was fit up and down the right hand side we didn't even do that not just that we had Chilwell playing as left wing for the first five six games of the season these decisions make no sense and he went into a press conference after the last game where a journalist asked him about Mark Cucurella inverting into midfield and why we hadn't seen it yet and he started talking about this you know before you sit down you have to build the chair and all the foundations now I understand getting players on board I completely understand that finding their rhythm you know making sure they're doing their off the ball work creating connection making sure that they feel free within the system but we literally had zero implementation you're telling me that if we'd inverted Cucurella heck when we had Ian Martin who do the job even better that we couldn't have done that when we had Levi Cowell at left back he simply couldn't have inverted into centre back because you know you have to build the chair first 
It's ridiculous. Pochettino should have been implementing this so much sooner and it's not just that but we talked about where we are right now in seventh place feeling such an achievement to be in Europe yes comparatively to our season it is an achievement in the last couple of games we've bought our way into Europe however at the beginning of the season the owners Pochettino the sporting directors were very clear especially Pochettino in his opening press conferences the Champions League was the aim and anything less would be so short of the expectation and the prestige and the history of Chelsea Football Club and all we've seen throughout the whole season is is just backtracking on that word. Yes, it is an achievement comparatively in the last month. Our form has brought us to Europe away from the bottom half of the Premier League to Conference League slash Europa League. But this is not where Chelsea should be. Yes, we have a young squad that's going to take a bit of time and Europa League will not have been the worst in the world. But honestly, this squad has a lot of talent. It really, really does. No matter whether they're young, they are really, really talented players. And we should have been pushing at least, rivaling for a Champions League spot. Not to mention that the standard, aside from the Champions League this season, has been really, really poor. The fact that we've only just got level on points of Manchester United, who have had such a bad season, shows just how bad we've been. Yes, we've got there, but it's not exactly much pride in being level on points of Manchester United after the season they've had. Talking about poor teams, we've struggled against the lesser teams, the relegation teams, the bottom half teams, all season. Literally last month, we drew 2-2 with one of the worst Premier League sides I've ever seen in Sheffield United and 2-2 with relegation Burnley, who had 10 men. These were absolutely disgraceful games. And yes, we're talking about has Pochettino changed, but these games were only last month. And it's not just that, but we've been outplayed by championship teams this season. Leicester, Leeds, Middlesbrough. This is all an example of how we failed to pick up easy points this season. Of course, the fixtures I just reeled off were in cup competitions and we just about got past them. But Sheffield United, Burnley and so many other examples, Wolves, etc. We've let go of such easy points. And within that, we've really failed to show that we can break down low blocks. And even though recently we've been scoring a lot of goals, none of these goals have come against super low blocks. Against Everton, we just scored a flurry of goals at the beginning and they lost their heads. In our last two games, West Ham and Spurs, Spurs go full pelt, inverting both fullbacks and ball. They know no other way of playing. And when we saw them, when we beat them 4-1 in November, they had nine men on the pitch and they were still playing a defensive line all the way at the halfway line. And West Ham, even though they're typically a side that sits back, they didn't sit back against us and they were so badly organized against us. I saw some of their pressing structure. It was genuinely all over the place. Now that's not a knock on Pochettino of recent because we haven't played a team of that ilk yet, but equally we haven't exactly seen progression in that when throughout the whole season we failed to break down low blocks. Throughout the whole season we've been absolutely terrible in the second half. We were in the relegation zone at one point if you look at second half performances. We haven't seen progression in this aspect. Now the last down on Pochettino that has to be mentioned is as much as he's improved our attack, our defence has been a record breakingly bad. We've conceded 59 goals in the Premier League already this season with three games to go and that has broken our record for goals conceded in one Premier League season. And if you compare this to last season, which I think is a good way to do it, last season we had the drawn fifth best defence in the league. We conceded 46 goals in the Premier League and that was with a horrific, horrific Chelsea team that finished 12th and if you listen to any podcast that Lampard went on after our season, I mean you could tell it on the pitch anyway, but the players were on the beach for so long of the end of that season, especially once we lost to Real Madrid in the Champions League. And don't forget, we were so bad before then. They were completely on the beach. Half the team wanted to leave Chelsea in the summer. All of them had given up. Some of them didn't want to play, so they didn't get injured. And we still had the fifth best defence in the league. And we've had such a drop off this season, breaking the record for goals conceded. And don't forget that our defence hasn't changed that much. And in the aspects that it's changed, it's kind of improved. Silva and Badia Shile were our main defence of pairing for the second half of that season when everything went terrible and we still have those two players at the club right now and on top of that we've added Axel de Sassi, Levi Cole, etc. And then at right back for most of last season we had Aspilicueta starting. Now I love Aspilicueta, absolute Chelsea legend but we brought in Malo Gusto, we had Rich James for the beginning of the season although he hasn't played much, that is definitely an upgrade in that position. And then at left back we had either Mark Cucurella who's still starting for us or Lewis Hall and I absolutely love Lewis Hall, I think he's an amazing player but in terms of defensiveness, you know, he was a midfielder up until last season, so he wasn't exactly used to playing left back. So defensively, it wasn't exactly the best situation for Lewis Hall to be in. But somehow we've got from that defence in that team that had completely given up and was 12th place in the Premier League, and somehow it's got considerably, considerably worse with 59 goals conceded with three more games to go, a record-breakingly bad campaign 
for our defense. So at the end of the day, I've gone through kind of the positives and negatives of Pochettino. I'm gonna bring it all together right at the end, but we have three games left and European qualification is clearly going to be a huge, huge factor in the decision on whether Pochettino stays. We've already seen the report from David Ornstein saying that Chelsea are demanding that Pochettino finishes in a Europa League place, which by the way, really surprised me that Chelsea were that ballsy considering they've been calling this a project, etc., etc. The fact that they're putting such a big claim on something that a couple of games ago was really unlikely. Conference League was all we could really hope for is really ballsy, but I like it. Our last three games are against Nottingham Forest, Bournemouth, and Brighton, and those are incredibly winnable games. It will test what I've already spoken about in this video of teams that are in the second half of the table that we haven't performed well against. However, equally, none of these three teams really sit back that much. You know, Forest, they have hudson Adoy, Elanga, Gibbs-White, they like to attack. Brighton, we all know under De Zerbi, they have one style of play and they go for it. And Bournemouth under Iriola also don't like to back down against a fight. So they won't really be that low block team that we've struggled against this season, but equally they are potential banana skins because in theory we should win all of them. And I think that is the expectation that should be set on Pochettino. Nine points from these games should be expected. That will show actual change from Pochettino's Chelsea. And I think if we win nine points from these three games, we will get Europa League. I don't see Newcastle getting nine points in their last three games, especially with the fact that they still have to play Manchester United, who obviously are busting gut to also get into European qualification. Now, the last thing before I give my overall verdict is mention that report from David Ornstein at the beginning about the managers that categorically will not become Chelsea manager should Pochettino's position become void. And the fact that he listed off so many managers that, as I said, a lot of fans were clamoring for to replace Pochettino, asking him to go and replace it with Ruben Amrim, replace it with Jose Mourinho, some people were crazy, etc. They aren't available anymore. And to be honest, out of the ones remaining that we know might be interested, that Chelsea might be interested in, you have Robert De Zerbi, who personally, I like his style of play, but he's very, very one-dimensional and he hasn't had a good season with Brighton this season. I personally would not really want De Zerbi. And then you're left probably with Michel Sanchez of Girona, who obviously has had an incredible season with Girona, but a lot of Chelsea fans are annoyed with how we're only signing young players and how we go for inexperience in this project. Well, that is exactly that with Michel Sanchez. And to be honest, personally, I haven't watched too much of Girona. A manager that I have watched that I really, really like is Sebastian Honus of Stuttgart. I've been watching Stuttgart recently. He has a really, really nice system, but he really gives his players freedom within that system. And they've gone absolutely incredibly in the Bundesliga this season. They just beat Bayern. They're pushing for second place over Bayern Munich in the Bundesliga, but even third place would be a fantastic achievement when they were looking towards relegation and lost Wataru Endo to Liverpool and so many top stars last season. They've been really, really good. However, again, this is another project manager that kind of goes against what a lot of Chelsea fans are asking for. And before you say it, Thomas Tuchel isn't coming back. So overall, on Mauricio Pochettino, my opinion is mixed. If he wins the last three games, gets nine points, gets us Europa League qualification and continues the tactical implementation, showing you some sort of tactical brain in these last three games, playing good football and keeping clean sheets because our defence has been so bad and it's actually a backbone of Chelsea. We're always known for having a good defence. Obviously our record breaking 15 Premier League goals conceded. We need to keep that up. And Pochettino, if he does that, I'm not going to lie, he will be in good stead. As much as I'm someone who's gone at Pochettino a lot, if he does all of that, all in those three games, he will have shown that a lot has changed. But equally, this will be in a short amount of games, a short period at the end, and all managers can go through good form. And what's happened with the rest of this season is still extremely relevant. So would I 100% keep Mauricio Pochettino if we win our next three games and do everything that I listed off? No, I think he'll be in good stead, but a lot of other factors matter. How we play in those three three games, how we judge the rest of the season, the fact that we thought Champions League was a given at the beginning of this season and also which managers are actually available because as much as we can go off reports, we don't know which managers are actually available in reality. However, if we don't win these three games, if we don't qualify for Europe at all, it's not a question for me, no matter what the factors are, that Pochettino has to go. He's completely and utterly failed in that respect. If it ends up being a kind of conference league, maybe we win two out of our last three remaining games, then I would lean towards still getting rid of Pochettino because this is the time for results. Once again, context does matter in that regard. We'll see how we played in those games, but we also have to be ruthless. And Chelsea 
Chelsea should not be dying for a Conference League spot. We should be up towards the Champions League. I'll give you Europa League when you take the context of this season, but Conference League would still be a bit of a downer. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to give me your opinion on Pochettino and whether you think he should be Chelsea manager next season in the comments. And I'll see you next time.